The United States is a big fan of India. The relationship between India and the United States has never been stronger, has never been better. We all know that the United States and India are pretty good buds, but that wasn't always the case. It's actually been a bit of a rocky relationship, but a necessary one. Hey guys, I'm Sana, this is AJ+, and on this Sunday, I want to talk about why the United States has always needed India, and how India, well, maybe hasn't and doesn't. India, it's the world's biggest democracy, one of the most populous countries, and a nuclear power. And its relationship with the United States has been split into three major periods. The first is the pre- and post-1947 partition relationship. In 1947, Great Britain granted independence to the subcontinent after years of a struggle for independence. Independence, though, resulted in the creation of two states, India for the majority Hindu population and Pakistan for the minority Muslims. But the U.S. government, however, was a bit wishy-washy on Indian independence until Franklin Roosevelt. Roosevelt. FDR was a supporter of British withdrawal from not only India, but all colonies. In fact, he kind of made it a prerequisite for American involvement in World War II through the Atlantic Charter that brought the U.S. into the war. Now, after partition, the United States provided a lot of economic and military support to India. Plus, there were even some back and forth state visits as well, establishing that there would be a relationship between the two countries. And when in 1962, India and China went to war over disputed territory, then Indian Prime Minister Nehru reached out to the United States asking for assistance, and the U.S. obliged, providing arms and air support. But then we enter the second phase in U.S.-India relations, where alliances shifted thanks to the Cold War. By the mid-60s, the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union was in full swing, and the U.S. was worried about what kind of an impact and influence the Soviet Union would have on another regional powerhouse. China. I spoke to Richard Rousseau of the Center for Strategic and International Studies about how the U.S. began moving closer to China and then Pakistan during the 60s and what that signified. We began to see that building a stronger relationship with China and peeling China out of the Soviet orbit was a, a primary interest. And also Pakistan began to open itself up for a security cooperation. Those seemed like stronger bets than maintaining a, a pretty nascent relationship with India. So that second phase, uh, it wasn't so much that we abandoned India. But uh, we began deepening partnership with India's uh, two biggest regional rivals. One of the biggest signifiers of how the U.S. was pivoting away from India during the Cold War was during the 1971 India-Pakistan War. Despite having provided military support to India during the 1962 India-China War, the Americans sided with the Pakistanis in 1971. And they did that because of the role Pakistan played in mending relations between China and the U.S. And India wasn't too stoked about that. As a result, the country that had resolved to remain unaligned during the Cold War ended up signing the 20-year Treaty of Friendship and Cooperation with the Soviet Union. The 70s continued to be a pretty tense time for U.S.-India relations. In 1974, India completed its first nuclear test, and the U.S. wasn't so down with that. We are firmly committed to only to the peaceful uses of atomic energy. And then, in 1978, the U.S. enacted the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, which India had refused to sign or comply with. So the relationship was strained going into the 80s, until the 90s, when we hit a new era of Indian economic and nuclear power. In 1991, Prime Minister P.V. Narasimha Rao and Finance Minister Manmohan Singh, who later became the Prime Minister, by the way, liberalized the Indian economy. Their interest was in the development of deeper ties with the United States, and that meant opening up the Indian economy. And the U.S. and India definitely got pretty close as a result of that liberalization. But it was only in 1998 that India became a major strategic ally. In 1998, India and Pakistan tested nuclear weapons underground. And the international community condemned both, with the United States even going so far as to impose sanctions, though they didn't last long for India. So U.S.-India relations were strained again officially, but as Rousseau told me, think tankers and policymakers took notice. And, you know, with economic reforms, uh, with the nuclear test, which kind of woke us up, you know, we began to view India as, a, as an emerging power. And when the 1999 Kargil War over disputed territory, Kashmir erupted between India and Pakistan, it was Pakistan that was told to calm down and pull back. This war, alongside the nuclear test, was major in repositioning India in U.S. foreign policy. Beyond just an economic ally, India was becoming a crucial strategic ally in Asia. Enter the 2000s, and the so-called War on Terror was a major opportunity for U.S.-India relations. Both countries not only boasted large militaries, but India also claimed an interest in so-called counterterrorism. So in 2005, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and President George W. Bush signed a major defense framework pact. It brought the countries together
together in counterterrorism, disaster relief, maritime security, and even stopping the proliferation of, quote, weapons of mass destruction. Less than a month later, the two countries signed a nuclear initiative, signaling a major turning point in their relationship. The initiative allowed for the first time civil nuclear exchange between the United States and India, and made India separate its military and civil nuclear facilities. Fast forward to the Obama years, and the relationship between the United States and India became tighter than ever before. In fact, in 2010, President Barack Obama actually even backed India for a permanent seat in the UN Security Council. And since the election of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the relationship between the two, whether economic or military, has only gotten closer. But before you click away, let's not forget the role that China plays. A growing number of folks in the United States that have this vision that stability in Asia, certainly 50 years or 100 years in the future, as the United States you know, declines relative to China and other rising powers, it sure would be great to have a stronger relationship with India and for India to provide a different source of strength and power and security for Asia, one that we think that uh, in a lot of ways is ideologically aligned uh, with the United States. But as Dr. T.V. Paul of McGill University told me, India isn't exactly waiting to serve the U.S. India is still a country that believes in strategic autonomy, which means it does not want to be a close ally of anybody in that sense, even with the U.S. And he points out it's not just the United States who's worried about China. The Chinese have now starting what they call one belt, one road policy that is uh, resurrecting the Silk Road through the Central Asia to uh, which includes Pakistan to Europe. And this the Indians are finding difficult to accept because they fear that it is the beginning of a geopolitical project so that they will then need to militarize or bring naval forces to the Indian Ocean to protect their trade assets, trade routes. So the U.S. needs India for its future in Asia as a stabilizing force, especially against China. But in India? India has spent 70 years dictating its own direction, and maybe because of that, it doesn't need the United States for its own future. So I found it really interesting how India has remained pretty independent in its 70 year long history. Uh, so what do you guys think? What else do you guys want to know about India? Maybe China? Maybe US relations with other countries? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.